Ten years ago Saturday, the costliest natural disaster in U.S. history struck, and it had a name, Katrina, killing close to 2,000 people and costing, by some estimates, nearly $150 billion. This hurricane gave new meanings to the word devastation for millions of Americans. Wednesday, August 24, 2005, Tropical Depression 12 strengthens into Tropical Storm Katrina on the way to Florida. Thursday, Katrina becomes a Category 1 hurricane just two hours before hitting Florida. During six hours over land, the storm is responsible for 14 deaths and over $600 million in damage. Then, Katrina is back to tropical storm strength in the Gulf. Friday morning, with Katrina back to Category 1 status, the National Hurricane Center shifts the possible track from the Florida Panhandle to the Mississippi-Louisiana border area, and Governor Kathleen Blanco declares a state of emergency for Louisiana. Federal troops are deployed to coordinate with FEMA. At 5 p.m., Katrina is now a Category 2 storm. Saturday morning, Katrina is now Category 3, and officials in multiple Louisiana parishes issue evacuation notices. At 5 p.m., New Orleans Mayor Ray Nagan announces a state of emergency and calls for a voluntary evacuation of the city. Governor Blanco asks President Bush to declare a major disaster for the state of Louisiana, and he does. Sunday, just after midnight, Katrina reaches Category 4 intensity with 145 mile per hour winds. By 7 a.m., it's a Category 5, winds 175 miles per hour. In a 10 a.m. press conference, Nagan announces a mandatory evacuation order for New Orleans, saying, we're facing the storm most of us have feared. At that same time, the National Weather Service in New Orleans issues a bulletin predicting devastating damage to the area. Now, the Superdome opens as a refuge of last resort, and around 20,000 people go there. The Louisiana National Guard has brought enough food and water to cover 15,000 people for three days. Monday, August 29, 2005. At 6, 10 a.m., Hurricane Katrina makes landfall as a Category 3 hurricane at Bay St. Louis, Mississippi, with sustained winds of more than 125 miles per hour and a devastating 25-foot storm surge. By 8 a.m. in New Orleans, water is rising on both sides of the Industrial Canal, and the National Weather Service issues a flash flood warning, announcing a levee breach at the Industrial Canal. The advice for people in the area is move to higher ground immediately. By 9 a.m., there is 6 to 8 feet of water in the Lower Ninth Ward. By 11 a.m., there's around 10 feet of water in St. Bernard Parish, and many rooftops can't be seen because they're underwater. New Orleans Homeland Security Director Terry Ebert says he's positive there are casualties based on emergency calls from people stuck in trees and trapped in homes. He says... Everybody who had a way or wanted to get out of the way of this storm was able to. For some that didn't, it was their last night on this earth. And that was just the beginning of a true, long-lasting nightmare scenario directly affecting Mississippi and Louisiana and indirectly affecting the rest of our country in many ways to this day. Commemorating the 10th anniversary of a national tragedy. In New Orleans, for Weather Nation, I'm John Van Pelt.